certain goods and services are there which are exempted as per the rules and regulations and the laws and provisions of the GST. If it is less than five members in the GST council meeting, then they cannot pass any resolution or they can't take the major decision for the changes to be brought in the GST part. The term electronic commerce means supply of goods and services including digital product or digital or electronics network. Warm welcome to 6M BBS in the subject we are discussing goods and services tax. Unit 2 we are discussing. In our previous session we had a discussion on CGST, SGST, IGST and UTH differences. In today's session we are going to have learn the sections which are involved in GST and the schedules as well as provisions in the concept of GST. I am Professor Rajesh L.A. from Department of Commerce and Management from Vidyashram First Grade College temple of excellence Mysuru. In our previous session we discussed about the dual concept of GST advantages and the impact of GST on the country, central government and other parties. In our present session we are going to discuss about the article 279a GST council and how they form the council and what are the things they do in the activities what is GST Act section schedules, sections and provisions of CGST Act 2017. These are the concepts we are going to discuss in the present session. The first concept we have here, Article 279A, GST Council. This says that when what are the things, provisions we have and how the council makes that one. Say that GST Council shall consist of the following members, namely, who are the members of the GST Council. The first member of GST Council will be the Union Finance Minister, is the chairperson of the council, the Union Minister of State. In, in charge of revenue finance is the member. They are saying that one central that is union finance minister will be the chairperson and state union ministers in charge of revenue or finance are the members. The ministers in charge of finance or taxation or any other minister nominated by each state government is the member of the council. So now who is the main person here? The Union Finance Minister is a chairperson and state union ministers, either finance or revenue, they are the members of the council. Second, what is the role of GST council? Means what they have to do and what are the key things are they? The taxes, cesses and surcharges levied by the union, the state and the local bodies which may be subsumed in the goods and services tax. They are saying that when the taxes which were collecting by the government, the state government or union government or the local bodies that be merged into one concept and be called as GST as one nation one tax concept. The GST that may be exempted from the GST subject to the law of provision. Certain goods and services are there which are exempted as per the rules and regulations and the laws and provisions of the GST. Model of GST loss principles of levy apportionment of goods and services tax levied on supplies in the course of interstate trade commerce and also principle that governs the place of supply. The saying that when the role what we they have here, what is the model of GST law? It says that is CGST and SGST. When the goods are moving from one place to other place within the state, it is called intra, and if it is going outside the state, it is called Inter. So based on that one, whether I have to levy CGST, SGST or CGST, UTGST or IGST only. So based on that, all the things and which are the things are called as supplies and what, on what basis they have to tax like play on the base of place of supply. Special provisions are given in respect of state of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Sikkim, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Jammu and Kashmir, Tripura, Imachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, such states are referred as special category states under GST Council concept. 
the effective date of levy of GST on petroleum products is still it is not decided that discussing and the decision may take very shortly where they can add the petroleum products to the GST and where it be supported to the a common man and even for the country also. Guiding principles for GST council while discharging the functions conferred by this article, the GST Council shall be guided by the need for a harmonized structure of GST and for development of harmonized national market for goods and services. They are saying that every concept or law is framed based on to support for the market and even for the citizens and even for the nation's benefit only and not for any other political concepts are involved in framing the rules and regulations in the GST. Quorum, if they want to take any decisions, one half of the total number of members of the GST council shall constitute the quorum at this meeting. If there are 10 members are there, 5 members are presented for the meeting, so then they can pass the resolution in the meeting. If it is less than five members in the GST council meeting, then they cannot pass any resolution or they can't take the major decision for the changes to be brought in the GST part. So what is the procedure? The GST council determines the procedure of its function. So total concept, how it has to work and from where it has to start and what are the rules and traditions are there and what type of concept should be there in the GST and from where it has to be considered and what are the rates has to be fixed and which goods are to be considered and which services are to be considered. Every concept are finalized by the GST council and they decide whether we are to start from the place of supply or from where it has to be considered while collecting the tax on the goods and services. Decision by GST Council. Every decision will be taken at GST Council meeting by a majority, not less than three fourths of the total weighted votes of the members present voting in accordance with the principles of GST law. They are saying that when, if it is a major decision has to be taken in the GST, what they are saying, the three fourth means it is nothing but there should be at least out of 10 members, there should be seven members should be there in the meeting then only it can be called as the quorum and even they can pass the resolution if it is less than that one they can't take any type of decisions here the oath of central government shall have weightage of one third to the total oath cast and the oath of state for the central government it is one third and the state government it is a two third total oath we have it given by the GST council and based on that they are going to check whether how many members are there based on that they finalize and overall total vote weightage will be three fourths out of one third and two third. So now we have to think that one, how many members should be present to take the major decision which may affect the nation's economy and growth. The statement of dispute, the GST council shall establish a mechanism to adjudicate any dispute. They are saying that if there is any queries or issues are there, so then these are the people where they are going to sit, discuss and finalize between the government of India and one or more states. They are saying that one, if there is any issues with the central government and the state government, either it may be one state or any of the states, plenty of states are there, that will be discussed clearly with checking out where the mistake has taken place or how they have understood the concept whether in a positive way or negative way whether it's going to be benefited for them or not they're going to identify between the government of india and any state or states on one side one or more other states on the other side they're saying that when for example if the karnataka is in one side and remaining other states are one side means the Karnataka is accepting the concept example we are giving here. The Karnataka has accepted certain norms of the GST and other states have not accepted the GST concept where there is a dispute between the state as well as government here. So now in this triangle concept, they'll sit, discuss and what benefit has been 
gained by the Karnataka, they will explain and what will be the benefit for all other states, they will explain with the new rules and concept, whatever they framed for the betterment of the state as well as the nation. Now, moving into the GST Act sections and schedules, say the CGST Act 2017, we have the total number of sections, we have 174 and the number of schedules are 3. In IGST Act 2017, we have 25 sections and SGST, we have 26 sections and GST compensation to states, we have 14 sections and one schedule. Remember this one carefully. For the examination, it may be supporting concept for you people to write certain information or in your competitive examination. The CGST Act as 2017, 174 sections, number of schedules 3 and IGST Act 2017, 25 sections, SGST to 26 and GST compensation 14 sections we have. Sections and provisions of GST Act 2017. So which are the sections are there? The major sections we have taken here for the discussion here. The section 3 deals with the classes of officers of GST. It means the top level of the GST council and other members. Section 4 says that when CBIC to appoint GST officers. And section 6 says that when delegation of powers to state GST officer. So what are the powers are given and what is their duty, responsibilities, everything will be discussed under section 6. Section 7, scope of supply means what is supply, time of supply, place of supply, the every concept will be discussed here. So what is the scope of supply and which one is called supply here. And section 8 deals with tax liability of mixed supply and composite supply. Sometimes we cannot divide the certain things from the supplier. So then we are going to call it as a mixed supply, composite supply where certain components can be divided and the tax can be levied on each ingredient or the material used in the production concept here. Section 9, charging section of GST means, so what is the tax has to be charged? Like for, for example, in GST, we have only five rates, 0%, 5%, 12%, 18% and 28%. So on which goods and services, which type of rates has to be taxed and how they have to tax the car on the goods and services. Next, section 10, composition levy, that is 1% on the turnover. Time and value of supply, section 16 to 21, input tax credit for whom the tax credit are given and for what purpose they are given and what is the benefit is there from the ITC. It will be discussed in the unit 4 and it is very much required for the present business people as well as for your examination purpose also. Section 22 to 30, we are going to discuss about the registration process. Uh, what is the terms and conditions and what are the things documents has to be submitted and other part here. Yeah. Section 34, 31 to 34, the tax invoice, credit and debit note will be discussed here. Section 35 to 36, it discuss about the accounts and records of the business and even the tax process here. Section 37 to 45, totally returns of GST. 49 to 50, it will be payment of tax to the government how much they have to pay, on what they have to pay and what is the amount they have collected and what is the remaining amount they have to pay to the government. So tax deducted at source, if the TDS concept is there, so what they have to do? Collection of tax at source, TCS, refund from 54 to 58 and the assessment, we have partial assessment, self-assessment, different types of assessments are there. Every concept will be discussed in the unit 5 from section 59 to 64. The next, the audit. How they audit and what is the procedure for the audit? Who will audit the records and other part and what the things has to be audited and submitted to the government? Section 65, 66, 67 to 72, inspection, search, seizure and arrest. Section 73 to 84, demands and recovery. 85 to 94, liability to pay in certain case. 95 to 121, advance ruling. 122 to 138, appeals and revisions. Section 144, presumptions as to documents. 
from 143 to 174 miscellaneous provisions including the provisions relating to the imposition of interest and penalty if the tax has not paid on time and if they have not disclosed the information properly and if they have find any default so what is the penalty has to be charged here that will be discussed from 140 to 174 in these sections this is the 174 sections what we have under cgst act 2017 Next, we have here the important sections and provision. Section 24, sub clause 44, it says for the e commerce, the term electronic commerce means supply of goods and services, including digital product or digital or electronics network. So, every concept is now in the form of e GST things where we can identify and the workload of the tax concept calculation as burden has been reduced for the SSC. It is all a electronic system based. They can get the information easily. What is the tax they have collected and what is the tax amount they have to pay to the government and when they have to pay to the government. Every information uh, through e-commerce concept they are supporting to the all the manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers and the business people who are involved in the goods and services. In the upcoming session, we are going to discuss the intrastate supply and interstate supply and even the explanation of the person, taxable person, registered person, unregistered, related person, distinct person and casual taxable person, non-resident taxable person, regular scheme and composition scheme will be discussed in the upcoming session and it is very important for you examination part of thing to write the theory part here. Namaste to all 6 MBBS students. In today's session, we discussed about Article 279A and even the sections and provisions of CGST Act 2017. Thank you to all my dear students. Namaste.